I promise these are gonna be the last book hauls that I do because during the semester I'm too busy to buy books. That's a whole lie. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm telling myself right now. But one book that I got from Thrift Books that came after the others is Hold Me by Courtney Milan, which is the second book after Trade Me. But this book follows a side character that was in the first book. So it's a companion series and this book is about a trans woman and her relationship. I have no idea what the actual plot is, but this is college based. And then I got three books from a Depop order. So I got the 10th anniversary edition of Looking for Alaska by John Green. I know this book gets a lot of drags for being pretentious and unrealistic, but I just have a soft spot for this book because it was one of the first YA books I read. Lee Bardugo, coming for your crown. It has black pages. I love this edition and it was like five dollars. And then I also ordered two new adult books from this person. Why do I look like Albert Einstein? I ordered two new adult books from this person. First is Amor Amor by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is set in a circus and it's adult romance. Sarah Without an H, who's a reviewer that I trust, has read this and rated it like three or four stars. It was just like average to her, which is good enough for me. Then I have The Law of Moses by Amy Harmon, who is the author of Making Faces, which I read a couple of maybe one month ago. This is about a guy named Moses who when he was a baby his mother abandoned him in a towel so they were like baby Moses. <laughs> if you've seen Prince of Egypt you get that reference. It's on Netflix. Go watch. He was a crack baby and he was a messed up teenager and now he is older and the main character of this book was told to stay away from him but she couldn't stay away from the bad boy. I thought Amy Harmon's writing style was incredible in the last book that I read for her so even if that book doesn't have the greatest of plots it should have great writing. I am currently sitting in my new apartment. Hello! How's it going everyone? And I'm eating some potato salad. I have somewhere to be in 20 minutes. So <laughs> just having a light snack beforehand. This is what my hair looks like after you braid it. So Maggie and the Ferocious Beast aesthetic, I guess. So over the weekend before I got back to school, no, it's not a weekend, what? Before I came back to school, I tried reading a romance book that I ended up DNFing, but I want to talk about it real quick <laughs> so I can tell you not to read it. So I got approved for a romance book on NetGalley called Fight or Flight. This book was about a young woman who was flying from Phoenix to Boston and in a series of mishaps, her flight gets canceled and she has to go to a new flight and like all this airport mayhem occurs. While she is in this stressful situation, there's also a guy trying to get from Phoenix to Boston who is so pushy and rude and steals her first class seat. They end up sitting next to each other on their connection flight that they get and then they stay together at the same hotel at the connection place and it's them being like enemies to lovers supposedly <laughs> the cover is so cute for this book to be as bad as it was I only read 30% of it I got through the first sex scene and then was like Egh. first of all these characters in this book are so entitled and rude and privileged because literally from page one they're like I want a first class seat and they're so annoying like as someone who works for an airline and can empathize with airline customers being the way they are. These people were the worst and they were just constantly being rude to one another and supposedly that's enemies to lovers. This main guy character isn't even like jokingly making fun of her. Like he says gross things and just uh, uh. The writing style was horrible. Every single line of dialogue out of the characters' mouths, I just was smacking my head on a table because it was so bad. And like I said, I read up until the first sex scene. In that scene, the dialogue that occurs between two humans physically involved is so tragic and gross. It's like Sarah J Mass level demonic. It's not my thing. I really didn't like that book. I gave it one star. To recover, I started a new book on my Kindle that I also got from NetGalley. That book is called Nobody Cares by Anne Donahue. This is a series of essays from a young woman. She has anxiety. I really don't know why I requested this. I did never heard of the person and typically I don't gravitate toward essay collections but for some reason I just wanted it. Maybe it's because there's embroidery on the cover and I started reading it and within the first 15% was loving it because the first few chapters were about having anxiety and I could relate so much. Now I'm 50% of the way through and it's starting to lag a little bit because it's talking about her life and more things that I can't relate to as much. I think if this would be on audiobook I would enjoy it a lot more. I'll let you know how that finishes up and I have to leave in like nine minutes to go to this thing. Quick bookshelf tour. 
There you go. Basic FAQ. I live in an apartment. I live with three roommates, Kaylin, Julia, and Veronica, who I have been friends with since freshman year. This is my last semester as well. If you have any other questions, let me know. Right now we are sweaty gals because we just got back from running errands. Errands. Before I do a little book haul, I want to introduce you to my roommates. We all know Miss Kaylin, famous. The OG. This is the squad. We have the one and the only Miss Julia. Hello. You must remember her. Hi vlog. The one and only Miss Veronica. Okay. Now you know their names, unless you skip this vlog and then you are confused. So I was just in the student center because I had package notifications out the wazoo. First one has the author name on it. So I think these are a Jacqueline Woodson book, if not plural Jackson Wood, Wood who? Woodson books. Ooh la la. So the book that I got from Penguin is Harbor Me, the sixth book in the Shadow Me series. We are proud to present you with two new books. Oh, there's another one in here. Harbor Me is a middle grade novel. It celebrates the quiet yet powerful healing that can occur when a group of students finds an outlet to listen and be heard by one another. So no wonder it's so tiny, it's middle grade. Then I was also sent this picture book called The Day You Begin. It can be summed up by its opening line, there will be times when you walk into a room, there's no one quite like you. So this is about a black main character, I believe. This seems so cute. So thank you, Penguin, for sending me some Jacqueline Woodson books. I screamed when I saw this package because I didn't think I was gonna get it, but I got it. If this is the actual arc, I'm gonna yell into the void. I've been a fan of Miss Peregrine since like 2012, so oh my god, I think it's the actual arc. Oh my god. Oh, some photographs. Love her. No way. Oh my god, I didn't know they were doing arcs for this series. They haven't done arcs of any of the other books. My entire life is whole. This is the fourth installment in the Miss Peregrine So Kill Your Children series. They've never done arcs for this series. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So this series has been one of my favorites. It's about a boy named Jacob who goes to Wales with his father. He meets some strange people that have strange abilities. It's just a trilogy of going around the UK and meeting people with powers, strange photographs, strange evil villains. Oh my god, I cannot believe I got an arc of this thing. Thank you so much, Penguin. Hey guys, it's me, Nicole. <laughs> so, coming to you live from my death because I just got back from the gym and everything hurts. So I ended up deciding to not finish that nonfiction book of essays that I'd begun. I was still at 50% and just wasn't feeling it. And the stories were getting really random and not anything I could relate to. So I just kept getting more and more bored. And then I realized this would make a much better audiobook for me because I typically listen to nonfiction on audiobook. So I'm putting it on hold until the audiobook comes out, which realistically probably means I'm not gonna finish it ever. But I really liked the first couple essays about anxiety, so I'm conflicted. So instead of that book, I picked up The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and read approximately 18 pages of it before literally having to fall asleep while reading it because I was so tired last night. But after I got this mamma jamma in the mail today, I said, screw you, Cruel Prince. I'm going back to a series that I know and love. So I sat down and read 78 pages of Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. This literally just picks up where the last book ended and all the characters are thrust into our world. Is that a spoiler? Probably not. I love it. It's just like dipping your toes back into a world that you know and love. And I love Ransom Riggs' writing style. It's one of the best in YA in my opinion. I just forget that those books are as good as they are because I never talk about them as much as I should. But I highly recommend that series even though I know it's not for everyone. There's kind of mixed reviews. I love it. And I promise I'm not just biased because he's married to Tata. I would sit up but I've been to the gym for two days in a row and it hurts to move my body. Okay, I'm gonna get up for you for Warner. Oh my god. Ow! Ow! <sighs> that was an Olympic feat. I look like a boy with my hair in a braid. So what's the agenda for today, you might ask? Or maybe you didn't ask. It's fine. Got to page 157 of A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs, which is like less than half my, maybe like 40%. And then I ended up having to do an assignment for a teacher before Tuesday, first day class. And then Gabby had a dinner party and I went to that. I'm gonna go take a survey of my roommates and see who's dying because our AC is broken. So it's 85 degrees in here. Is this the Krusty Krab? <gasps> Are you reading? Oh my god, do a reading vlog clip. 
Okay, hey guys. So I'm rereading the first two books in the Samurai Charm Party Trilogy. Oh my by god. Khan. I'm on the second book. About 50 so pages in. Really loving it. I'm rereading these two because I haven't even read the third one ever. So and I forgot what happened. I'm gonna do a bookshelf tour of your bookshelf. Well, I have some books over here too when you're done. I like Candy Series by Lauren Conrad. The most cheesiest series you'll ever read. The most? cheesiest <laughs> you know but i love all the swiss all the sargento i brought it for julia to read and then we have new moon because you girls were reading the twilight series and then you have the un the unexpected everything because i never finished it then you have the last song my favorite book of all time and then the dorothy must buy must buy. buy must buy yeah so we set it at a hot 70 hot 70 but our our apartment is a hot 82 and this is the cool it's been all day it's with 101 outside today so you can imagine how it felt in here send help today is sunday our official first day of school is tomorrow but i don't have monday classes or work on mondays so tomorrow is basically just a free day for me i've been making my way through a map of days for ransom rigs as you can tell i've pretty much put everything aside for this book because i was not expecting it in my mailbox i'm so excited for it and i got to page 260 yesterday so i'm like a little over halfway love it so far i love the growth of the characters i love the adventure they're going on and I, it's just a good time however I think the reason I put that book down is because I'm very spoiled now and I've gotten used to the feeling of ebooks in my hands. So I just wanted to be able to hold my Kindle. I put a pop socket on my Kindle, by the way. Am I a genius? Probably. Harvard, if you need someone to give a scholarship to. I wanted to start a book on my Kindle, so I picked up a book that I hauled in my previous vlog The Princess Trap by Talia Hibbert. This is a romance book that's based on, oh, hello, Bonnie be tweeting. A couple years ago, a picture went viral of this Danish prince that no one had ever heard of, but he was really attractive and everyone was into it. So this book is kind of a spinoff of that. And it's about this fictional Danish prince who's touring different schools in England to establish a new foundation for getting underprivileged kids in education. And at one of those academies, he meets a woman named Cherry. They start flirting and having a little fling and she does not know he's a prince until the paparazzi find them and he has to tell her I'm a prince and now people think we're engaged because we were caught together on the streets and that's the lie that he formulated to the press. So it's about this person being trapped as the title said as the fiance to a prince of Daneland. What's it called? Denmark. I was like Danish Dan Dan land. <laughs> so I'm 33% of the way into that. I'm on chapter 12 and I love this book so far. It is so conscientious of gender roles and feminism and the main character is very feisty and strong but like is more than just sassing the guy character. She actually stands up for herself and anytime he says something weird or treats her wrong she calls it out and he's also very respectful with her space and the way that he talks to her. It's just so well done. I I think it's a black main character. There's a hijabi side character. It's... Come in. Food is ready. Hey, you wanna eat? This book is a whole snack and my whole dinner is ready, so good things happening. Hello, friendos. Today is Monday at 11 p.m. and I did a little bit of reading. I have not been reading A Map of Days as much. It's really good. I just don't have a motivation to pick it up. I turned to my ebook and I am currently 75% of the way through my romance, The Princess Trap. She is that rest steamy. Whew. The only issue I have with it is that I really wasn't expecting it to go so hard. It's kind of intense. I should have expected it from a series that has the title Dirty British Romance Series. <laughs> it's very feminist, don't get me wrong, but the guy likes having control, which isn't a bad thing. It's just an intense thing, but no, it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. I have like 20% left, so should be fun. Tomorrow is my first day of class. Oh my God. It's my last first day of class ever. I'm just now realizing that on camera. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, that's scary. You go from last year when I thought I wouldn't be able to make it one day. I don't know how much I talked about my anxiety on camera, but last year I had a very severe relapse of my anxiety to the point where literally on the first day of class, I had to skip one of my classes because I had to go home because I was having really bad chest pains and I was having an anxiety attack and I couldn't go to class. I wonder if I have that email. Yeah, dude, Dr. Fields. First of all, I apologize for missing class on Tuesday and not getting in touch
touch sooner. I just wanted to make you aware that my absence was due to a panic attack I had that day as a result of my generalized anxiety disorder. I haven't felt the need to come forward yet and say anything about it previously because it's typically dormant, but right now it's impacting my ability to attend class and focus, so I wanted to be clear about what that might mean for my academics. So then I sent in this huge message about my anxiety and how I might have to leave the classroom or bring knitting in order to focus. And by the way, that's something I highly recommend doing. If you be transparent about any conditions you're having, professors usually are very hospitable about that sort of thing and they want to know that about their students. His response was, Dear Whitney, I think all your conditions are fine. I say yes. I'll try to make sure you have a desk with an open right side near the classroom door so you can disappear and reappear and no one will pay any mind. I really appreciate your explaining things so well. We'll make this work to the least amount of attention. Literally, that was August 31st, 2017, and now it's August 27th, 2018. So almost a year ago, I was skipping class because of panic attacks, and now I'm about to have my last first day of class. Totally fine after months of going to the counseling center and getting on medications. You can do it, ladies. And guys and non-binary friends. Everyone can do it. I really have to go brush my teeth and get ready for bed and then I think I will spend the rest of the time reading until I get tired. First day of class is over. Did no reading today because was busy with classes. <laughs> I think I read last night before I fell asleep though, so let me check what I'm on right now. I got to page 84 of The Princess Trap on my Kindle. It's kind of going downhill because they've thrown in this massive conflict that is much bigger than the parameters of the story outline. Here's this lighthearted romance, this guy and this girl like Prince, romance, whatever, but the conflict of it is something that's massive and needs development and needs like hundreds of pages to delve into. So it just seems awkward to be in a story of this scope. Who that? What's our reading update? So I'm telling you the book I'm reading right now I'm almost done with but the conflict of it like the thing that we're dealing with right now that's like the big issue of the story is like really underdeveloped and random. But yeah that's my reading update. What's your reading update? Um I have about 50 pages left in the second book of the Summer I Turn Pretty series. Good deal. Gonna go work out. I'm so sleepy. I don't know if I can do this vlog clip. I seriously had like 10 pages left of my book but took five breaks to close my eyes and take a power nap. I just finished The Princess Trap by Talia Hibbert and I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. I kind of skimmered the ending. The conflict that takes place is just so out of place. It seems like the author bit off more than she can chew and there wasn't enough explanation behind it and there wasn't enough build up to it. So in the end, even though it's supposed to be this really, really serious thing, it falls kind of flat and unrealistic. But I do like the story a lot. I definitely intend on reading more from that author because the representation's great and it's realistic and fun. I don't have class tomorrow, so I think I'm gonna finish Miss Peregrine and then we can end the vlog here once I do. Howdy comrades, it's Wednesday at 2.45 p.m. I have to go leave to do office hours for one of my jobs. I've been reading all morning and made it to page 421 of A Map of Days. It's very fun to read. I'm sure I'll finish it within the next hour when I'm at my office hours, but it's very quiet and I doubt I'll feel like filming, so we'll see. Hello MTV, welcome to my cribs. This is my empty office with empty bookshelves, a Cheeto that I found in my bra yesterday, and a lot of dead bugs in that corner. It's 3.15, I'm about to finish my book. I'll let you know when I do. Today during my office hours, I did finish A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. I thought this book was so cute and so much fun and it was a lot of action and I missed this series and this book made me realize that I could read a 30 book series of all these characters and never get tired of them. It's not like a top tier book like Six of Crows where I'm in love with each character because it's a lot more action based than character based but it's still such a cool world and I like how this expanded the world building to America and it set up for a really awesome next book as well. I love the new characters and I love everything. Oh, it's so good. I gave it five stars. I hope you enjoyed coming along the first week of school with me. Let me know if you want to see anything specific in these vlogs. I actually have real reading to do for homework now, so I gotta go do that. Mm -hmm.